April 2010, the most shocking vision to come out of the war in Iraq was published by WikiLeaks. All right, firing. Let me know when you get it. Watch you. Light them all up. Come on, fire. The U.S. Army video filmed in 2007 showed a group of men, almost all unarmed, being gunned down in a Baghdad street by an American Apache helicopter and recorded the voices of the soldiers carrying out the attack. In the weeks following Private Bradley Manning's arrest, an even bigger story was building. Julian Assange by now was a wanted man, as he circled the globe with the treasure trove of documents he'd allegedly received from Private Manning. In conditions of great secrecy, Assange did a deal with two of the world's major newspapers, the New York Times and The Guardian. One man had reportedly been carrying an RPG, a rocket-propelled grenade, but two of the unarmed men who died were Reuters news staff and two young children in a van were seriously wounded in the onslaught. The title given to the video, Collateral Murder, marked the launch of a highly politicised agenda for WikiLeaks, driven by the website's founder, Julian Assange. Hillary Clinton and several thousand diplomats around the world are gonna have a heart attack when they wake up one morning and find an entire repository of classified foreign policy is available in searchable format to the public. The United States strongly condemns the illegal disclosure of classified information. It puts people's lives in danger, threatens our national security, and undermines our efforts to work with other countries 
to solve shared problems. What has angered the United States government more than anything is the wholesale leaking of the State Department's diplomatic cables. Opinions differ as to how much damage this has done. Advertised WikiLeaks' unbroken record in protecting confidential sources. But just seven weeks later, Private Bradley Manning, an army intelligence analyst based in Baghdad, was arrested and charged with leaking the video. Criticized agenda for WikiLeaks, driven by the website's founder Julian Assange. Of course, the title is absolutely correct. It speaks about a very specific incident. Uh, if you go to cladomurder.com, you will see the exact incidents talking about when a man is crawling in the street, completely unarmed, wounded, uh, and he is killed by a 30 millimeter cannon from the air, very intentionally, um, and his rescuers. I watched the Apache helicopter attack in the video uh, with the eyes of a former Marine infantry officer. I was a platoon leader and company commander, and I was also a battalion training officer who had trained troops on Nuremberg and the laws of war. It was very clear to me that what I was looking at was a war crime, was murder. The video's credits paid tribute to our courageous source. What Assange had given the Guardian was the Afghan War Diary, a vast compilation of army reports from the war stretching back to 2004. More revelations would follow. This disclosure is about the truth. In October 2010, the Iraq war logs were published, detailing allegations of torture by the Iraqi Federal Police and complicity in that torture by the US Armed Forces in Iraq. And this is a list um, of reports with sort of keywords in context. The logs revealed the military's own inside story of the wars. And for the journalists charged with sifting through the documents, it was a God-given gift. We have denied receiving those cables. He has been charged about five days ago uh, with 
obtaining 150,000 cables and releasing 50. I mean, if you, if you did receive thousands of, of US embassy diplomatic cables... We would have released them. Yeah. You would? Yeah. So, so let's talk a little more... In fact, the cables were already in Assange's possession. And four months later, they were published in The Guardian and New York Times. Just how seriously the US administration viewed this massive leak became clear when Dean Bacay and his colleagues approached the White House to discuss redacting the cables before they were published to ensure no lives were endangered. Please leave a message or call me back later. Thank you. It's the voice of a man who, following his arrest, has now been silenced by the American military. Bradley Manning's fate is now extremely uncertain. He's been moved from solitary confinement at Quantico to another military base. He faces a full court-martial later this year, and if convicted, could spend the rest of his life in prison. So far, he has steadfastly refused to implicate Julian Assange, even though to do so could lead to a reduction in his sentence. Even within the more politically considered circles of Washington, there's a strong commitment to nail Julian Assange. This Washington courthouse is where it's believed a grand jury has been sitting in secret preparing a sealed indictment against Julian Assange, which will allow his extradition to America and a trial for espionage. But Private Manning's trial is imminent. The soldier's accusers say he betrayed his country and the oath of allegiance he swore when he joined the army. But in Europe, he's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. To his supporters, Private Manning is a hero. All the fame and all this hype about WikiLeaks and Julian and Julian's problems in Sweden. I mean, what are these problems in Sweden compared to the trouble that this private is in? I mean, this person who potentially is, I think, one of the biggest heroes for freedom of information in our time. So, so how does that relate? There's not no relation in between these two things anymore. So that's what I don't get. Everyone should be talking about Manning and not about, about Julian's trouble in, in, in Sweden or in Great Britain or wherever. God knows what happens now. Hopefully, worldwide discussion, debates, and reforms. If not, then we're doomed as a species. I will officially give up on the society we have if nothing happens. One thing is for sure. Julian Assange's fate is inextricably linked with Bradley Manning's. And the two men, whether they ever collaborated directly or not, share a common idealism. I want people to see the truth, regardless of who they are. Because without information, you cannot make informed decisions as a public. That truth provides a historical scaffold, a true scaffold on which a real state can be built, on which 
societies can be built. If he could speak from his cell to the rest of the world, what would he say now? Pay attention.